Of course, if you're a mathematician, now you're probably asking yourself, well, what if the power is fractional, like 1 over n? So you have x to power 1 over n. Remember, that notation means it's the radical notation or nth root of x. So depending on whether n is even or odd, we'll first of all determine the domain. Because we cannot have even root of a negative number. So whenever n is even, our domain will be restricted to 0 or more. So for half, we have square root of x. Again, you can plot some points and determine what the values are for y. Square root 0 is 0, square root 1 is 1, square root 4 is 2, square root 9 is 3. Plot the points and connect them. And you can see that we have f of x equals square root x to have this graph. The domain would be 0 to infinity, range is 0 to infinity, x and y intercepts are 0, 0, function is 1 to 1. So inverse function, again, undoing square root means squaring. However, it's not the entire x squared function. It's just the function when x is greater or equal 0. So pause the video here, and you plot some points and determine what the graph of x to power 1 third x looks like, which means cube root of x. Go ahead, pause the video, make a chart just like this one, and again, find domain and range, x, y intercept, see if it's 1 to 1. If it's 1 to 1, find its inverse. So pause the video here, and let's see what we have. Go ahead, you can try. It's possible some of you are now starting to get to the end of your patience, so you may want to pause, maybe even take a break and come back. But just remember, try on your own first before you continue watching this video. If you're starting to get overwhelmed, just remember to do one thing at a time. Be kind and compassionate to yourself. Take three breath practice, take deep breath in, and deep breath out. Soft inhale, soft exhale, don't get overwhelmed. You can do this. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look. So cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, cube root 0 is 0, cube root of 1 is 1, cube root of 8 is 2. If you plot all those points and connect, this is what you see. You can see that the domain then is negative infinity to infinity, range is negative infinity to infinity, and x and y intercepts are 0, 0. You have this function is the inverse function of x cubed because you're just simply interchanging x and y. So domain for the inverse function and range for inverse function is negative infinity to infinity. So how can we summarize all of the x to power 1 over n graphs then? How about you pause and create a summary for us? Go ahead, you can do this. So you can plot a few graphs and see what the relationship is between them. Here's your even roots, here's your odd roots. Numbers between 0 and 1, when you have 6th root versus square root, 6th root numbers between 0 and 1 are higher than square root. Similarly, 5th root numbers are higher than cube root. If you have numbers for x greater than 1, then square root of those numbers are greater than sixth root of those numbers. Similarly for cube root. For cube root, you can also have negative numbers. And so you can see how the domain and range is affected then for both of the even and odd root functions. Intercepts are the same, 0, 0 for both. They're both one-to-one -one functions. 
And to undo roots, you have to take power. So x to power 2n and x to power 2n plus 1 are the inverses, respectively. And the n behavior we already saw when we were graphing even and odd power functions prior to now. Given that we have now looked at so many different kind of power functions, you are well equipped to investigate a power function f of x equals x to power negative 1 over n or 1 over x to power 1 over n. In other words, 1 over nth root of x. So you go ahead and investigate these power functions. If necessary, you can use decimals. You can use graphing utilities, you can plot points, but we definitely think you are capable of figuring out what these functions look like. If you are stuck and you still can get it on your own, I would highly recommend looking at the textbook, but we think that you can do this on your own. So go ahead and try getting your graphs for functions of 1 over square root or 1 over cube root, and then generalizing it and getting a summary.